I like that. Mm. Oh, wow. So good. Oh, whoa. Look at this guy. Oh, my goodness. Dax, you're going to die when you eat this. Oh, my God. Today I am in Singapore's Chinatown. Now this place is like literally food and drinks mecca. There is so much to see and do and eat. But I'm going to show you my ultimate guide, Hawker Center's Secret Gems Bars. Let's do it all. The first place I wanted to take you guys is here, a Moy Street food center. And like this is literally why I have always loved coming to Singapore. Okay, so on this one table, in this one hawker center, we have everything from Indian food, to Chinese food, to Malay food, to a Japanese kind of Chinese hybrid, which I'll get to later on, it's really interesting. But first of all, I'm gonna start off with fried carrot cake. Now, if you're not from this part of Asia, that might be a bit confusing for you, but it's actually stir-fried radish cake. So these little, like, these little chunks are radish cake. They get stir-fried with egg. You have a black version and a white version. The dark version has sweet soy sauce and the white one doesn't. So that's the main difference. Let me have to get in here and have a look. Mmm, like a really soft mashed potato kind of, but then it's firm enough that you can stir-fry it and get this really lovely crispy edge on it. So good. Let me try the dark version. It's really got that like dark soy sauce molasses -y kind of flavor. A lot stronger flavor than the white version. Mm. So good. This dish owes its origins to Malay cuisine. And the thing here is that it's like an explosion of flavor. So many different things on the plate. They've really done a good job of the sambal. And then let's taste it. Oh yeah, that's a good one. It sort of hits you with the spice, but then sort of get this beautiful sweetness afterwards. Oh, yeah, it's got some kick to it. Okay, let's try it with the rice and curry sauce. It's so good. This one tastes like a fish curry. And then we've got fried chicken. We've got this guy here. I don't even know what that is. Let me see. Oh, it's like a fried potato cake. Oh, yum. It's really soft. That's beautiful. Delicious. See, every mouthful is different. You kind of get bits and pieces of everything. Oh, and the spice level is good. Mm. Okay, see these guys here? Curry puffs, but make it Michelin. These guys have been awarded a Bib Gourmand from Michelin, and look at this pastry. Oh my goodness, it's so flaky and soft. Now this is the sardine version. It's all handmade at the stall and they literally only make about 500 a day and they sell out really quickly. This is gonna be good. Okay, I don't even know how you make pastry this light. It just like disintegrates the second you taste it. Wow. You're gonna love this one, Bang, if you get any, because I'm gonna eat it all. Mm. So good. Teeth check. I think I'm gonna try this truffle one next. That's right, you heard right, the truffle one. This is really cool. So I was walking past a hawker stall and I noticed that they had a truffle dish. So yeah, we're here in a hawker center and here we are with a char seal pork, Iberico char seal pork, no less. So a Spanish pork and that's been smoked with oolong tea leaves and I can smell the truffle. Oh, look, there's a piece of truffle. Beautiful, put that on my pork. Oh my goodness, that pork is ridiculous. It's got this really light smoky flavor definitely different to like a Chinese char siu pork. A little bit more subtle and I guess that's really good because you can taste the flavor of the truffle actually which is really cool. And this broth as well. Oh yeah it's like rich and porky and fatty. This is a really cool truffle dish and it's like seven US dollars. Where are you getting that at a hawker center around the world? This is amazing. Ah I love it. to find in this part of Chinatown is actually really good Israeli food. I mean, Singapore really is a global city. So let's go get some Israeli snacks. Okay, that was really busy in there. It was like, it's lunchtime. Everyone's just poured out of offices and it's now almost pouring rain. So I'm gonna eat my sandwich. Look at this, so good. The pita looks really soft. That falafel looks really yum, okay. So 
good. Ah. I love the fact that I was literally just at a hawker center eating Chinese food, Malay food, and now I'm eating Israeli food. Amazing. Mm. That's really good. It's a good falafel. Yum. <laughs> Now let me show you Duxton Hill. This place is so unique. It's beautiful old shop houses, so tradition, but turned into something new. Not just in the architecture, but the food also. So you guys know I don't necessarily like to follow the rules when it comes to cooking. Well, I feel like I've like found my soulmate of a restaurant. <laughs> Alcoholic Milo! Ooh, that's really strong. <laughs> so fun. Lady bubble. Oh! So this is the big one. Yeah. So we're kind of in this like old school, yet not old school kind of grandma, but not your grandma's average Chinese shop house restaurant. And the food is this cool mix of traditional Asian and then like other influences from everywhere. For example, lobster kui pai tea. Kui pai tea is typically this crispy shell at the bottom, but usually filled with yam, vegetables, prawns. But here we have lobster. Sort of like a lobster mayo concoction. I don't really know how to tackle it. I think it's too large for one bite. Yum. So it reminds me of like a Japanese sushi lobster like filling. And the lobster is so fresh and yummy. And then there's like this crispy shell at the bottom is so good. And now we have like one of the specialties of the restaurant. So this is hockey and me, but it's got like pancetta and octopus, which I don't think is very usual for a hockey and me. Still have the traditional condiments here, sambal, calamansi, lime. Let's have a try. So awesome. That gravy, so full of flavor. It's got like seafoody flavor, very savory. And I noticed when they were cooking that they grilled the scallops and then tipped some of the scallop juice into that, that gravy. So really a lot of care taken to give you like the best kind of flavor. Mmm. <coughs> Woo! Sambal is spicy. Wow. It's really beautiful. This Cantonese bakery is an icon. Q motorbike, Q more truck. <laughs> This Cantonese bakery is an iconic Singaporean institution. They opened in 1935 and they're famous for their diamond-shaped coconut egg tarts. And someone who loves egg tarts, very excited. Okay, so I have actually even more tarts than I thought because I have an egg tart, the coconut egg tart, and I have a white pastry. So this symbol here means prosperity and then also the lotus pastry too. I'm gonna start with the egg. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Can you even see this custard? It's amazing. Okay, I would literally come to Singapore just for this egg tart. <laughs> I'm gonna try the coconut one now. So the coconut is fresh coconut. So not desiccated or dried, but fresh coconut. Mmm. Oh, wow. That flavor, so amazing. Wow. That fresh coconut really adds such a beautiful flavor. Okay, let me have a look here. Kind of flaky pastry, all those layers. It just melts in your mouth. It is so delicious. Mm. Oh, here. This is really good. I don't know why I'm doing this, but whatever. Peace, pastry, prosperity. <laughs> I really love egg tarts. I really do. I mean, so good. Why don't you come sit down and have a little bit of vino? Get yourself a vino. I swear, I just came for the coffee. We came for coffee and then look what happened. Ah. <laughs> oh, see, there is coffee. Look, we did get oh, coffee. <laughs> but how lucky are we that we found a French wine bar on the way. Huh? See, Singapore. Love it. Things you find in Chinatown.
I am so excited. Look at these dishes. They are absolutely beautiful and speak so much to the tradition and history of these kinds of Chinese Singaporean dishes. I want to talk through some of them because there's some interesting things going on here that you might not know about. This one here is called a yam ring. Now you'll find this dish everywhere from hawker centers to high-end restaurants. So this outside basket, if you like, or the yam ring is made of yam and it's crispy on the outside. Looks kind of fluffy and yum in the middle there. Let me try. Oh, wow. When you taste it, it's actually quite like an architectural feat that's gone on right there. It's been holding everything inside, but it's so light and fluffy. Oh my goodness. Prawn and the cashew. Yum, that's really good. I've never tried that before. That's really amazing, wow. Mm, so good. So here we are in the natural habitat of the Peking duck. <laughs> so he's gonna do the skin first. Traditionally you would cut the skin and then you eat the skin with the pancakes and then they'll take the duck away and do the meat in a separate dish later on. Mm. Oh yeah, that is so good. Ah. The pancake's really nice and soft too. Oh, so yum. That duck, so good. Let's see what's next on the Lazy Susan. <laughs> that never gets old, it's so fun. Okay, Singapore chili crab. All right, now this restaurant does it differently. So they've cooked it in a clay pot and that's supposedly to keep the sweetness of the crab shell in the dish itself. Whoa, look at this guy, oh my goodness. Is that head size? I think that's a head size claw. Wow. It's very dangerous wearing this dress and operating on the crab. It's all right, I'm a professional. Don't try this at home. Aha. If you're a crab lover, you'll know the joy this has given me right now. When you get the full claw meat out like that, yeah, I've been practicing a long time. Oh my goodness. Get out of town. Whoa, crab meat is so soft and sweet and juicy. And the chili sauce, I need to get in there and try the chili sauce on its own. Mmm, it's so interesting. Like, I've been coming to Singapore since I was little with my parents, with my mom. Every place does their chili crab like slightly differently. Some places are more sweet, some are more spicy. I'd say this is a little bit more on the spicy side and not as sweet as some of you know the other chili crabs I've had, which I actually really like. Wow, this is a really, really good version. Mm. Mm. Yum. Okay, so we had dinner and we were very full, but then Holly spotted a <laughs> banana hot dog. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Hello, can I get the Kaya banana dog, please? So the deal is there is kaya, which is a coconut jam, a very traditional ingredient, but it's on a hot dog bun with banana, which I think all of that sounds really good. I'm having issues with the mozzarella part, but we'll see. <laughs> You're really excited. You don't have to eat it. <laughs> what would you have gone for, Dax? You know the answer. You would have gone Hawaiian dog. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> see, when you know each other's hot dog order, you know you're close. <laughs> you want to Thai accent? Thai yeah. accent. Yeah. Yeah. Thai accent. Kaya banana dog. <laughs> That's so good. So much better when Gao yeah. says it. Thank you very much. Are you ready? It's so dirty. Oh. Is it good? It's sort of giving me Hawaiian pizza vibes actually. It's got like that sweetness that you know shouldn't be there, <laughs> but you kind of dig it anyway. <laughs> Look at that, only in Singapore. I'm officially wigging out here, this is so good. Thank you. Right, thank, awesome. you very much. thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope I don't have lipstick on my chin. <laughs> 
So I know we've eaten a lot here in Chinatown, but there's still one more style of restaurant that I really want to take you to, and that's a Zicha restaurant. We are at Kok Sen, which is a very famous Zicha restaurant. So Zicha translates literally as cook and fry. And the idea is that these are dishes that are like homey, stir-fried Chinese dishes. You come with your family, your friends, you share a meal. It's all very delicious and very satisfying. What am I gonna order? Before we start eating everything, I just point out a few specialties here. So this is the big prawn por fun. It doesn't like anything that's a big something and it really, it's really massive. This is pork ribs with bitter gourd and a black bean sauce. We have our chicken skin guy over here. I mean, I am so keen to get in here. This one is clay pot frogs in Kung Pao sauce. Spinach, century eggs, salted eggs. I mean, I just want to get eating. Can we eat here? I'm just going to eat now. <laughs> I'm going to go in with the big prawn ho fun first of all. So ho fun is the noodle that's underneath the bottom here. And then there's like this really thick soupy gravy, which looks amazing. Oh, wow, 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 wow. The noodles underneath have that really amazing wok hay smoky flavor. And then you've got this like prawn savory gravy on the top. Oh my goodness, it's so good. Hey Jack, I'm saving this one for you. Ah! Oh my God. So this is the chicken skin dish, which I am so excited about. So this is basically the whole chicken skin. Yeah. And I will move out the chicken meat. Inside is the squid and the prawn paste. So it's just chicken yeah, it's just skin? The yeah, sorry, and in then between the skin. In between the skin yeah. is the prawn and squid. Wow. Okay, I'm getting in here. Oh my God. Dad, you're gonna die when you do this, by the way. Chicken skin's like the best part of the chicken. I'm just gonna take that off, crisp it up, and stuff it with some prawn and squid. I love Singapore. <laughs> this is Kung Pao frogs. And it gets some sauce in there. So good. If you're someone who hasn't tried frogs before, it does kind of taste like chicken, but it's a really juicy meat. So it's like white chicken meat, but a hundred times more juicy. It's really delicious. Mm. The sauce is just that right amount of like salty and sweet, and just a little bit of spice from like the dried chilies in there. That's really great. Oh, so good. One more, because I've never tried this dish before. It's bitter gourd, which is a quite a bitter vegetable, which I really like. We use it a lot in Thai cuisine, but I haven't had it in this black bean pork rib situation before. These are the ribs. More oh, yum. The pork rib is really soft and it's salty. You can taste the black bean. Okay, bitter gourd. Oh wow, yeah. I love this vegetable. If you like bitter things, it's definitely got that really kind of tart bitterness. It's quite strong, but the salty sauce kind of off offsets it a little bit. That's really good. I love that this is the kind of stuff that you just don't get if you're not in Singapore. Like a lot of these things, I feel like I need to come to Singapore to eat. You know what I mean? Wow. All right, guys, enough talking. You guys can eat if you want. <laughs> Dessert next. So we're gonna to go to a durian dessert cafe. So it's kind of really cool because you can see all the old shop houses, right? But everything or a lot of things have been converted into cool bars or restaurants. Everything old is new again. And I think, you know, a lot of things in Singapore are like that. It's a city that seems to change and move, you know, even with the food itself. Durian is a very traditionally loved kind of ingredient, but we're gonna go somewhere where it's kind of like been reimagined, so as a dessert. Not sure how I feel about that. You looking forward to the durian or the drink stacks? Uh, the drinks. <laughs> what about you, Frank? Durian or drinks? Durian. Oh, okay. I'm a bad Asian, I don't love durian. <laughs> Is that a bad, am I a bad Asian, Frank? No. Lots of Thailand, not like durian. Really? Too. So I'm not a bad Asian, just half bad. <laughs> if you were here with me, you would know that this was a durian dessert shop because you'd be able to smell it. Um, now, whether or not you like durian, I think this kind of thing is really cool and it's something that Singapore does really well takes something traditional and turns it into something new and amazing. I mean, who doesn't love little shoe puffs? And now we have durian shoe puffs. 
durian's not my favorite thing, just FYI, but I am excited to try this. Look at that, really good. And it's creamy, the bun is really soft. And you know, the durian's flavor actually is really nice in here. Was that convincing? <laughs> no, seriously. It essentially is really good, even for someone that doesn't really love durian. It's really interesting. I'm gonna try, what am I gonna try next? I might try the Swiss roll. It's also known as the stinky roll here. Oh, wow. That is actually really, really good. The sponge cake is so light. And again, the durian flavor is really creamy. Ah, oh, wow. That would be really good. The next one is a take on a traditional dessert, chendol, which is the little green guys here, coconut milk, and then gula malaka and some ice down the bottom. And then of course the durian paste and some beans as well. So it's kind of a bit of a, it's a bit of a mix. Mmm. That's actually really good. It's not too sweet. And then you've got that lovely like palm sugar flavor coming through. And the durian again is there, but it's not overpowering. Mm. I'm really a durian fan. I can't believe I'm eating all of this. It's actually really good. <laughs> like, yeah, you need to eat this now. So now it's drinks. It's my favorite dessert. God, getting repeat durian flavors. Whew. Oh my goodness, I have had the best time exploring Chinatown. We've done everything from like the oldest Chinese restaurant in Singapore to hawker centers to eating some very crazy desserts. And now it's time to have a drink under the twinkly light. Bye.